What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the AFC South Roundtable. I am your host, Tony Dow, joined by the usual suspects. We got Harley in the house this week with us, Derek Larger with the Colts, UCF Jaguar and Titan Rossi in the house. Man, we're going to get into it because all four teams have important games this weekend and a divisional matchup that we will be discussing that we'll get into as well. But before we do, we do want you to know this stream is being powered by BetUS. Take advantage of a 150% sign-up bonus on your first deposit up to $2,000 using code YouTube150. Again, that is code U2150, ladies and gentlemen. If you're looking for a sports book, BetUS is the place to be. Now, remember, with BetUS, it isn't just the casino, um, the sports book. It's also the casino, the live book. It has the race book, and it also has BetUS TV. You can check out BetUS TV. Even you'll catch me on a show Monday through Friday called The Huddle from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. M, ladies and gentlemen. So check out BetUS. Uh, make sure that you get more responsibly if you're going to be using the casino or the sports book. Um, and if you have any issues with that, there is a site on the on the site. There is information that can actually help you out. OK, so once again, the sports book is up and available for you to use. Let's see here. I want to look at the odds of the game this week. That way we could go ahead and take a look and see what are the best bets to be made. And we're going to ask your favorite creators here what they would do. Over here. Now, how you doing, Titan Rossi? I'm good, man. What about you, UCF? Hey, man, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Looking forward to this upcoming week of games. Hi, Derek. Hey, living life and living the dream, baby. And what about you, Harley? I'm always swarming, man, always swarming. Nice. Well, let's go ahead and dive into the game previews, and we'll have the sportsbook odds up in just a second. We want to start out with the game here. The Jacksonville Jaguars are at home versus the Green Bay Packers. A tough game, but the Jags are coming off of a W. We're going to start with Harley here. What do you have on this game, and what is your score prediction? Who the Jaguars playing again one more time? The Green Bay Packers. Oh, right. Yeah, the Green Bay Packers should win this game. Uh, and, and it's nothing against the Jaguars, but, I mean, we've said this before. UCF mentioned it. Uh, they, they're on a prove it now. They're, okay, played well against the Patriots. It's just the Patriots. But 32 points is always fun to see. And let's see if they could do it again against the Packers. I'm not expecting 30. But, hey, if they can string together another performance in an upset over the Green Bay Packers, don't see it happening. Jordan Love and the Packers and that defense, shout out to the defensive coordinator, Jeff Henley. He had our Texans lost. And, man, he has some exotic defense that he brings. He is fantastic. I expect that to be thrown towards the Jacksonville Jaguars. Expect the Green Bay Packers to win here. Jordan Love does his thing. Maybe three touchdowns from Jordan Love. That's how much I'm looking at it. Uh, mm -hmm. Wonder what Josh Jacobs does. I didn't really notice him too much in my game against the Texans. But I'll take the Packers here. I'll go. Uh, I'll go 27 to 20. I think it's going to be a competitive game, actually. Well, what about you, Derek? Yeah, I mean, obviously last week, Jaguars getting a win uh, against the Patriots, but I don't necessarily know if that makes me feel a lot better about their chances. I mean, their offense definitely has found a recipe to try to uh, attack this, but we've seen that Green Bay defense uh, dismantle a bunch of offenses time and time again, and especially against a Jaguars team that has really only looked good offensively in two different games this year against uh, two of uh, some of the worst defenses out there. Uh, this is going to be a whole different monster. Um, I definitely think that this will be a close one uh, as well. I'll go Green Bay 24 to 17. 24 17. What you got on this, Rossi? Yeah, I mean, you know, the Jaguars are two and one at home. I mean, they're 0 and four on the road this year, but they are two and one at home. They've been, you know, seemingly playing a lot better at home. So I think that's, you know, the main thing that they got going for them in this game. Um, I don't 
think it's going to be like a complete blowout or anything, but I think uh, I think the Packers are going to get this one. I'm going to say 30 to 21. 30 to 21. UCF, what do you see happening in this game and your score prediction? Yeah, I, mean, I do think that this one could be a potential trap game for the Green Bay Packers because the Jaguars are playing a lot better, especially the last three weeks. I mean, they're two and one in the last three weeks, and the offense actually has been moving a lot. And I mean, I really do think the Jaguars do have the ability to beat any team out there. It's just what Jaguar team shows up. I worry about the Jaguars defense. I mean, I do think that they're all, they're finally kind of figuring out where to play people like Eric Armstead has been playing edge a lot. Now they move them inside and he had one of those better games of his career. They're figuring out the secondary a little bit more exactly where to play these different, you know, safeties and cornerbacks like and they're kind of playing them in the more, the more natural roles. Um, so that's good. And Trayvon Walker um, is really kind of playing a lot better. But I, I just the thing that also worries me is the coaching. Um, I, I the the Green Bay Packers coaching staff is just so much better than a Jaguar staff, and they just they know how to game plan and scheme for these different opponents. I do think that this game is going to be close, but I really can't pick the Jaguars to win until they actually go out there and prove something to me that they can go out there and beat a quality opponent. So I'll say that the Jaguars lose 27 to 24. Oh no, a loss for the Jags 27 to 24 is what you said. Yes. Tough, man. Hey, but I know one thing, man. UCF, if you all win this game, are you back? <laughs> yes, we're back, baby. <laughs> all, right. All, right. all right, let's get into the Tennessee Titans versus the Detroit Lions, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the Titans have to go on the road in this one. Uh, Derek, um, go ahead and break this one down in your score prediction. I'm going to try to be real nice with this because – yeah, you know, I mean, it's the NFL. Anything can happen. Uh, and especially if Mason Rudolph is there, it gives them a better chance to win uh, than Will Levis being out there. But, I mean, this is a Lions team that their quarterback is doing stuff right now that he might have had, like, the greatest four-game stretch of almost any quarterback in the history of the NFL. I mean, he's literally completing 80% of his passes – for literally 300 yards a game and has yet to throw an interception in the last four games that he's played and has resulted in, I think it's what, 10 or 11 touchdowns through that time. I mean, he's going off right now. This offense and this team for the lions, we said, Oh, they might, they might take a step back. Cause you know, they lost uh, Aiden Hutchinson. I mean, yeah, they didn't look, uh, great defensively in some areas when they left. But that offense, I mean, that offense is red hot. I mean, it might be the best offense in the NFL right now. Uh, best offense in the NFL right now versus maybe the best defense in the NFL right now. Which one's going to come out of it? I'm taking the Lions here. Uh, I'm going to go 31 to, I'm not going to be respectful, 31 to 13 Lions. Man, talk to us, Harley. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, it's just basically the same kind of conversation you're going to get from me. Copy and paste, the Detroit Lions are a good football team. They were my Super Bowl pick for this year. They've been through the trials and tribulations. They've gone through some success and some negative stuff, and I think this is their year. I really do. Uh, regardless of Aiden Hutchinson going down, that hurts them, but they're facing the Tennessee Titans. I don't expect a lot. Uh, look, Mason Rudolph, yeah, better than Will Levis, but that's a very low bar. And the Titans, uh, they'd be lucky to get two touchdowns in this game. I'm giving them 10 points. Detroit Lions whoop them. Uh, we'll go, oof, man, we'll go 30 to 10. Detroit Lions destroy the Titans. Whew, UCF, what you got on this one? Yeah, man, the tank's going to move on, baby. The, the, <laughs> the Titans are going to lose to the Detroit Lions, which is going to be great for the Titans to be able to secure the number one pick and the quarterback of their future. The game that worries me is next week. They play the Patriots next week, okay? There's major tank implications on that game, and the Titans might slip up. They won't slip up this week. They're going to lose 41-14, to 14, which is going to be a win for the Tennessee Titans. Man, oh, man. Losing your win. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's get into the game of the week in the AFC South Roundtable before we get out of here. We got the Houston Texans on the road. Um, well, the Colts on the road 
versus the Houston Texans. Huge divisional game. Is this game going to determine first place in the AFC South? Uh, no. If we if we uh, win. if we if we win, we're still behind the Texans, even though we have the same record. Uh, they have the better divisional record than we do. So uh, they, head to head doesn't us. matter. Oh yeah, and did Rossi give his prediction? I don't know if I remember hearing him give his prediction for the Titans game. Rip. No, I didn't. I mean, I don't know if it's really needed, but <laughs> yeah, you know. we need it. We need it. I tried to speak. <laughs> <We need it. laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Oh, um, no, nah, it's all good, man. I, I was on a radio show last night in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Can you believe that? Uh, big there flex, was a big flex. Uh, yeah, the Detroit <laughs> guy hit me up on X. It was it was pretty cool. Um, but you know, yeah, I mean, the Lions are so good, man. Like I I really love how they play football like dan campbell the whole vibe uh jared goff like uh, the resurgence of jared goff who freaking knew um gibbs is killing it um montgomery david montgomery's even there killing it you know um saint brown i uh, wish he would have been a titan wish we would have got him in the draft we could have it's just you know like the titans right now I would say I could give two score predictions based on if Rudolph starts or if Levis starts, but it's not going to be a whole lot different. You might be like a field goal better, a touchdown better, possibly. Um, I think the Titans might play better. Um, I just, man, it being in Detroit, I think it's going to be tough. I'm, I'm going to say, I'll say the Titans score 17. You know, we'll give the Lions 33, the Titans 17. 33 to 17, but we're going to stay with you here, Rossi. We're going to get your take on this Texans Colts game. Yeah. Um, you know, I think this is going to be, uh, I think this is going to be a good football game. Like, I mean, even with Anthony Richardson playing or whatever, you know, I think it's going to be a tough game. It's a divisional matchup. And look, you know, are the Colts that bad of a team? I don't think they are. Yeah. They've, they've won some games against lower competition um, and, and this and that, but I, I think it's going to be a tough game. Um, you know, I think that it's at NRG, so that doesn't bode well in the Colts favor. I think Stroud is going to bounce back. When is Nico Collins coming back? Like what's, is he on IR He'll or something? He'll be a while. He's on yeah, IR. He's on okay. IR so. I think that's really hurting Stroud right now like I mean you look at Nico he's, he's one of the top wide receivers in the league obviously if you don't have a guy out there like that who was your go-to all last season this season too when he was in there it's gonna hurt your team it's gonna hurt your offense so um I don't know I'll give uh the Texans the win though I'm gonna say um the Texans 24 and the Colts 21 all right, UCL, let us know what you have on it in your score prediction. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like I've kind of been saying kind of throughout the season, like I really don't think that the Colts are like really that good of a team. But, man, this is a crazy opportunity for them, man. They have a chance to shut me up. And I think that this is the time where Anthony Richardson needs to rise above it, okay? He's going to be two weeks off of his um, – off of the injury against the – you know, against just being out for a few days or a few for a few games. So he has an opportunity to come out here and finally show up, throw for 250 plus passing yards, throw a couple touchdowns, go out there on zero interceptions or whatever. And man, the Colts have an opportunity here where they can improve to what is it, five and three and actually be tied for first place in the AFC South. Because man, if they can go out here and do that, that'll be a huge, huge statement game against the the defending AFC South champions and the team that's currently first place in the AFC South because a lot of Texans fans I don't think are respecting the other teams in the AFC South. So, you know, the Colts win, you know, we'll see Harley back next week. If the Colts lose, and we'll be seeing Ruben. So it'll be a pleasure to whoever's going to come on here and represent <laughs> the Texans next week. But, yeah, I mean, I am going to let the Colts prove me wrong. I'm going to say that the Texans will win this one 30 to 10. 30 to 10. All right. Woo. <laughs> Prove me wrong, man. Prove Did, me wrong. And you said Texans or Colts? I said Texans will win 30 to 30 to 20. I should. Wow. So 30 dude. To 20. Is that what I said? Okay. You said 30 to 10? 30 to 20. 
is 20, what I meant. Okay. Okay. I was going to say. Like, Sorry, did I say 30 to 10? You said yeah. 30 to 10. Oh, my bad. Yeah. 30 to 20. That's my bad. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> say, there's only been, I, I like only been one time that the Colts have been held to that this season, and that was the Packers game. I don't think that's going to happen again. Well, we're going to go with the favorite here first. Harley, how do you see this game and your score prediction? Uh, it's funny that uh, UCF says that we don't respect the AFC South opponents because I I don't. The Houston Texans, when they lose, um, and even in their wins, they just haven't played their best football. And when they lose, it's the Houston Texans. I'm worried about my Houston Texans. I'm not worried about the Colts. I'm worried about the Texans. And I know there is only one thing the Texans need to do, and the Texans need to do this. Show up. As long as they show up, they're going to beat the Colts. That's just, that's just how it's going to work. The Houston Texans, the C.J. Stroud had a bad game last week against the Green Bay Packers, but within that bad game, you still lose on a game-winning field goal off Brandon McManus. I, I mean, you know, there's always a little half, uh, half, what is it, a half full glass, whatever they call it. So the Houston Texans, I do believe, uh, we'll beat the Indianapolis Colts. We'll shut this door on all the positive energy that is coming around the Colts because it's a lot of what ifs coming out of Derek's mouth. And, you know, ifs, ands, and buts, I mean, eh, that don't bring me nothing. The Houston Texans and C.J. Stroud are back at home. Yes, do they miss Nico Collins? Uh, yeah, I didn't expect them to miss him that much considering the rest of the weapons around them. But Joe Mixon ran a buck 59 in the week one matchup. I expect more of the same from Joe Mixon considering the run defense for the Colts hasn't improved and the Texans should pound the ball. Try not to be a predictable offense. That's the only thing, man. Just don't be predictable. Don't run first, second, and then have a third and eight, and you already know they're going to pass. Stop having formations that are condensed where to the point it's so easy and predictable that you got the entire Colts defense or the Packers defense last week on the offensive line ready to just beat you down against a run. Stop being predictable. Do your thing. Change it up a bit. And D'Amico Ryans and the Houston Texans, as long as they show up, they're going to beat the Colts. The Texans are going to win this game. Uh, I am going to give them, I'm going to say 27 to, mm, I'm going to say 27, 20, just still it's a divisional game, but the Texans do show signs of improvement and they beat the Colts. Man, oh man, three Colts L's. Derek, tell them why they're wrong. Well, self implosion is is definitely a thing, and I think Texans fans are starting to realize the importance of Nico Collins. He has been the most important factor for the Houston Texans offense so far this year. When he, he's, I'm pretty positive he's the only wide receiver for the Houston Texans this year to actually record a hundred yards receiving in any given game. Uh, this year. So I, I will say that if he doesn't play, then this Houston Texans team starts to struggle a little bit. And there's a couple different things that are different this time around. The Indianapolis Colts admitted the first time that they were so concerned about trying to stop the passing attack for the Houston Texans. They completely abandoned trying to stop the run. And albeit Joe Mixon has not lost a step since that first week. But the Indianapolis Colts, they're getting DeForest Buckner back. They're starting to figure it out a little bit uh, defensively stopping the run. I'm not saying Joe Mixon probably won't run for another 100. I don't think he's going to run for 160 again against this defense. And when you don't have your best offensive uh, weapon outside of him and Nico Collins, then you're going to force a lot of these guys to have to start making some plays, which they haven't really done consistently so far this year. Uh, to make a huge difference to this offense. This Colts secondary has started to lock in. They have found the group of guys that actually is working with them. Uh, Layatu Latu leads the team in pressures right now. He's actually starting to get consistent pressure on the quarterback. And we just heard over today that the, the Houston Texans offensive line just blew a gasket against the Green Bay Packers. I have a feeling they're going to do the same thing here. And... Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor being back, dude, 
Indianapolis, I, I think, is going to shock the world. And when they win on Sunday, nobody is going to be allowed to disrespect the Colts ever again. And it will start this off right. So I am going with the Indianapolis win here, 27 to 24 on the road. Man, oh man, Titan Ross is picking his head. No, what's that about? <laughs> There, I, I mean, you look, man. You got to give a shout out to Derek, right? Don't, the don't eternal be, optimist. Don't try to downplay me. This right guy's here. coming back. This guy's coming back. As if Joe that Flacco don't matter. Gonna play. Joe Flacco is going to lead us to the promised land. Oh man! No, Joe Flacco ain't going to lead us to no oh, promised oh, land. He ain't playing no part. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Anthony Richardson can go go out there, rush for another uh, two touchdowns like he did the last time that we were at NRG Stadium. Derek be like, Derek be, the the Derek be like, Anthony Richardson away Different games team. in the second quarter has a 125.4 QBR, and they're going to play at least <laughs> one second quarter in this upcoming game. <laughs> oh, my god! Listen, man, I got to, man. I cannot sit here and say – and allow Harley to come over here and be disrespecting us like this. We were, th- dude, if Nico Collins hadn't caught that third and 11, that first matchup, guaranteed Anthony Richardson gets that ball back and we win that oh football my God, game. Dude, you, you can are what damn everything damn till the end of the Easy season. to make that Nico statement Collins when it don't matter. Playing in that first matchup. Mm, don't be a what if guy. One, y'all are going to hurt. Big what if. You guys have so many more opportunities to win. Big, Big what if. Good. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the AFC South Roundtable previews and predictions. We shall see. Next week is going to give us a lot of answers about every single team in this division, where they stand, ladies and gentlemen. But don't forget, this stream was powered by BetUS. Take advantage of the 150% sign-up bonus on your first deposit up to $2,000 using code YouTube150. I wish I had the odds right now, but um, my system's down, so uh, we'll get it up for the next one. But again, if you're looking for a new sports book, BetUS is the place to be. And for don't forget, it's not just a sports book. They have the live betting, casino, race book, bet US TV, and so much more. All right. Supporting our sponsors is supporting the channel. We love you all. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Peace. We are out.